Welcome to a journey of spices, excitement, experiences and stories of good flavour meeting great vegetables and fruits right here on Own Cuisine. Hello and welcome to another episode of Home Cuisine Authentic Universal Meditative. We are making dinner and come and join us in our kitchen. So I'm going to be putting in some coconut oil. I love this recipe with butternut squash. It is so tasty and supremely easy to do. It is so fun to do it. So fun. So I'm going to be putting in some cumin seeds. Cumin seeds are a fantastic digestive. I like to combine that with some antibacterial properties of cloves. Of course, it's already infusing the oil so beautifully. And then some minced ginger. And then some minced garlic. They need to make YouTube videos where you guys can smell because it just smells so good. So, so good. And then I'm going to be putting in some red onions. I want that to completely sweat out and get a teeny weeny bit brown. Not too much, but enough. I love adding allium um, to my trinity all the time with ginger and garlic cause anti-inflammatory properties, real depth of flavor, which comes from the ginger. A lot of the antibacterial aspects from the garlic. Um, of course, for people with any type of allergies, you know, the quercetin from the alliums, the onions really seem to help. So very well warming up. And at this juncture, I'm going to be adding the curry leaves. Unlike other recipes, I really don't need this to splatter. I just need it to um, kind of combine with the onions for added best of flavor. I'm going to be adding in a big pinch of turmeric and two pinches of red chili flakes. Now, if in case you don't like too much heat, of course, you can reduce the chili flakes but I think the chili flakes really add to the amazing aspects of this curry. Butternut squash, they're in bite-sized pieces. I like them that way, it really helps with easy cooking. It's got lots of fiber, so it makes it extremely healthy for the heart. Has plenty of potassium as well, which is always wonderful. And I want to mix in all the flavors like so. It's very important to mix it all in like that, combining it. And over here at this juncture, I like to add some cardamom. I really like cardamom. So, And you know, with this um, curry, I make it in the fall, but I also make it in the spring because you get butternut squash both times. I'm going to be adding in some cinnamon. The reason I prefer cinnamon powder in this recipe as opposed to cinnamon sticks is because I just don't want too many things coming and getting caught in my mouth, you know. Cloves, much better. It has lots of character if you put in the whole clove as opposed to, you know, the actual clove powder. And with cloves, I can really say how much would really be okay. Like four, four to six cloves is fine, but if the clove powder is a little difficult to judge, for even a very seasoned cook, it's difficult to do. So, don't want you having a little outburst with all the different spices and you're gonna be like, my God, I'm getting so introduced to spices and I like it. And remember, there's always a difference between something which is spices and something which is spicy. Okay, so there is such a difference. So when you feel that all of the spices have combined well with the butternut squash, this is a perfect time to add a little bit of coconut milk. Allow the coconut milk to really stew up and cook your butternut squash. You want to leave it there for about five to seven minutes. 
Okay, so that butternut squash is really softened up really well, really easily. It depends on the BTU of your stove, but it cooks really fast when it's in small bite-sized pieces like this. So at this juncture, I just add some green peas. It's perhaps one of the few things that I'm okay with having frozen as long as it's organic, but it's really lovely. It really brings out a nice little spot of color, and I love that about this. I'm gonna be putting in about a handful of cilantro to just bring it together. I'm gonna to be adding some salt to taste, and then some hot water. Once you do these steps, you really want to allow the gravy to settle in, the green peas to get a little bit of the flavor, and we'll be ready to plate in about two minutes. All right, so it's time to plate up. So I really love to serve this with a bunch of different options. It even goes very well with lightly toasted, bread if you know whatever is to your liking gluten-free bread is wonderful um, actually even though this is a curry it can be served as a soup because it's just so tasty and wonderful that way and what else do I do with this yes sometimes um, I love it to soak overnight after I serve it as a curry and I blend it all together in a way to mix the very next day for another variation of the soup. So anything is possible. It's all very, very good. So we don't need any more salt and I'm just gonna add some cilantro on top. And then I'm gonna be just taking in a little bit of the, the green peas and the butternut squash for some layering on top. So let me see. Extremely delicate, flavorful. Every spoonful tells a fabulous, lovely, lovely story. Let's put some put some butternut squash. Mmm. The butternut squash is so perfectly done. It's not squishy. Really yum. And lovely. What can I say? It's colorful. It's delectable. It's fascinating. It's so good for your heart, from our kitchen to yours. Until we meet again in another episode of Home Cuisine, this is Vaidya Priyanka.